I'd like to start out first to tell you a little bit about Prohibition and how we came apart uh, about. Forgive me on this large. You're fine. Can you hold that for a second? Back in 2015 was known as Derby City Spirits. Ooh. Derby City Spirits was owned by a different gentleman. Um, Keith Hazelbaker came along. He's a CFP. He wanted to um, and have his clients invest in something that he believed in. You're going to hear a couple of buckles in two, tell me. <laughs> um, so with that said, he came in and invested some of his own money. They quickly discovered that um, the guy was a huge con artist. He had stolen identities of the employees, taken out loans in their names, um, sold 200 shares of the company. There was five distillery commons that remained open during prohibition. Do you guys know why? Medical license. Medicinal purposes. Medicinal purposes, that is correct. Um, so back then you were you had to have prescriptions to get your alcohol. So they were allotted 80 proof in the morning and 80 proof at night. Uh, much like our marijuana today, in most states you have to have that prescription uh, to get your hands on. Also, at the beginning of Prohibition, there was about 20 Walgreens in the beginning. At, by the end, there was over 500 Walgreens. Known as the women's Alcohol and Burger King and um, Jim. Now, unfortunately, she did not get to live to see that event that passed. Um, she passed away before 1920. Um, she actually, her childhood home was here in Kentucky. So, guess what happened? The distillery came through. They bought that childhood home and they tore it down and they built. This is called All Nations. Awesome. I've had I've had some of their bourbon. Very good bourbon. When they open up for tours, or if they do, I'm not sure about it yet. I have to do my research. I will be there, standing in line. You also would have to have one of these. You might not want to stand here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They would have to have their gun because their guns protected them from not only the police officers but also other gangsters and or bootleggers that was looking to steal their products. They would also use something like these. Anybody know what we would use these for? Or they would have used them? Anybody? We're doing shots out of them today, guys. No, no, I'm, she's like, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> it's okay, here, I just want to say. Um, so, uh, they would take these and they would place them on the bottom of their boots so that when they walked up into the hills and the mountains, um, nobody was going to follow an animal, but they would definitely follow boot tracks, right? Just saying. So this hard work led to some very dangerous shortcuts. One of those shortcuts being the bath of gin. Now, this is some misinterpretation of Hollywood here because most of the rich would only have these tubs and they like this uh, alcohol. What they would use is something similar to those big barrels like you see on Little House on the Prairie or some of the older westerns, but they lined them with lead. So when they lined them with lead, that lead would reach out with the alcohol. Another shortcut that they did was they used radiator fluid <laughs> to sweeten their cocktails. But they did this up until 1973, guys. Jesus. Ready to flow to sweet. Okay. Yeah. No, cocktails. We got a little bit in there. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. You know. Um, supposedly Johnny Carson never had a cocktail without. And I was like, I'm not mad at that because like he must be pretty old, right? Um, another one was the clay jugs. Um, seems pretty harmless, but the clay would what? Chip off into the alcohol. So they got lazy, much like my youngest son. Please don't shut up. He's No, I'm kidding. But they would have to filter it at the saloon because those particles from the clay would break off into the alcohol. So they painted it with lead paint. Yeah. And then there was the radiator. We have three to offer today. In our Reposado, we go, have a partnership with 
See from seven, we go and pick up those barrels the day that they are dumped, so they're very, very wet. And we take that silver and we put it into the sequel seven and we age it. The one you're tasting today is going to be aged for eight months in the sequel seven barrel. Um, once it comes out, we do filter it um, because of that char. And then our añejo is uh, called añejo 92 or newly 92, meaning 92 fruit. Um, it's aged in four roses, buffalo trace barrels, because also we've done the day to day dump, they're very wet. We come back, put, put the juice in there, we age them separately, and then we blend them and go through them, of course. And then our extra in Yale. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the 92 is going to be aged for one year, three months. Our extra in Yale is going to be aged for three months, three years, three months in the barrel. So we call that the bourbon's bourbon. So it's very, very similar to a bourbon. So speaking of bourbon, what makes bourbon bourbon? 51% orange. Hmm? Yeah. Real oak. Real oak what? Real oak. It's not an oak. Is that stool is what the inside of the barrel looks like? It is. It's actually made out of sticks. So we make these uh, stools inside. All right, so we're a handcraft distillery. I'm going to rip my face on this. Don't do that. Um, as you can see, the barrels are invading our space up here. So we're not in production at this time. We're a small craft distillery. We make everything by hand, including our labels that we fill out on the bottom. Um, anybody know why this is called a fifth? Anybody? It's a fifth of a gallon. So that's why it's called a fifth. Um, this still over here is called a pot still or a column still. It could be either one. Um, what we do with our vodka is once we get all of our ingredients and we got that distiller's beer, the distiller's mash, we put it in the fermenting tanks to your left, those three big tanks over there. Um, and the, it sits there for two weeks in ferment. Once it's done with the fermentation, we're going to pull that out. We're going to throw it in here, in this still, and we're going to start the distilling process. Um, as it reaches through each one of these plates here, that's 10 times. It's distilled 10 times. Mm -hmm. 